the chemical feed, the intensive feed, becomes pollutants, which are then discharged through the kinds of discharge outlets that we can see. And that discharge feeds immediately into the canals and into the sea, polluting sea life, groundwater, village ecosystems. According to the report of the National Environmental Engineering Research Institute, the losses due to aquaculture are almost five times their potential earnings, and even these earnings last only a few years. This loss is due to the destruction of land and water, due to pollution, and the displacement of labor, amongst other things. This kind of ecological and economic destruction and social disintegration led the Jagannathans and the members of the People's Alliance against the shrimp industry, PASI, to file a writ petition in the Supreme Court of India. This case was filed uh, on two uh, main issues. The one was that it, because of this activity, uh, thousands and thousands of people, they are becoming uh, uh, victims of pollution. They are being displaced and they are suffering uh, 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 because of the depletion of groundwater sources, uh, because of uh, uh, loss of agricultural fields and uh, uh, because of uh, serious envi uh, environmental problems. The court on 9th May 1995 has passed an order stating that no part of agricultural lands, salt pans, be converted into prawn farms. The court also directed the officials that they should see that the fishermen can have a free access to the sea. The government should also provide drinking water to the affected villages. The court on 24th August 1995 has directed all coastal states and union territories will not permit or issue any fresh license for the prawn farms. Totally ignoring the ban, the shrimp industry continued to expand. Sri Jagannathan went on a hunger strike in protest and he was arrested. He was later released after the intervention by Parsi and other concerned people. Guru koi roi layo, baati na prane. Trade is not new. There has been trade for centuries. Fishermen have gone out to sea in their boats to reap the rich bounty of the oceans to meet their needs while conserving the resources for future generations. Women have, for hundreds of years, participated in a vibrant living economy, selling surplus fish in local markets. International trade in fisheries, and particularly in shrimp, is only three years old. It is as recent as the so-called free trade. 
but this free trade is free only for international traders, for large scale business and for those who have the capital to control resources in every village, every coastal zone, every ecological niche of every part of the world and trade it on global markets. It is the end of freedom for the fishermen, for their families, for their children who play freely on these coasts and beaches which have been their commons and their homes. While the industry has robbed the parents of their livelihood, children are preferred as labor. Cheap, exploitable, they have all the necessary attributes needed for the highly skilled task of collecting shrimp seed. These children are today the sole breadwinners in many coastal families. For the child, the child stands in the water for hours on end. So the, the skin is affected and it's saline water. So you, you get lots of uh, skin uh, uh, affections like um, dermatitis and things like that. And the uh, skin peels off. And uh, sucking in salt water all the time, no? it, uh, the water is polluted. So the child also drinks, drinks it up. It uh, creates problems in the mouth. It cre creates problems like diarrhea for the child. And exposure to the cold. You know? it, it, it's, um, affects the respiratory system and the general uh, health as well. Child labor is only one facet of the use of violence to destroy local economies in order to build global markets. Andhua in Oresa, where on the 13th of January this year, two young fishermen were killed by police firing at a peaceful protest against the shrimp industry. Others have been injured in other conflicts with the police who, at the behest of the shrimp industry, have often opened fire on unarmed, peaceful protesters. On the 1st of September 1995, local hoodlums, supported by the police, attacked the Sahu family with axes because they were refusing to lease their land to a prawn company. One of the brothers was grievously injured. 75% of the prawn production of the world is consumed by Japan, USA, and European Community Union. Are they in the last list of prawn producers? Why are not producing prawn and eat those prawn? So I will say those who eat prawn in the world, because only the richest people in Western and industrialized countries, they eat prawn. So those who eat prawn, they only eat the sweat, blood, and livelihood of the common people of the third world country. Vikirane, Vikirane, Velinatil, Vikirane, Talari, Talari, and Rane, Ye America, Europa, Island, Talari, Talari, Vanda, the Veliki Pogre, Kandayar, Alpandayan, and Chiparaya, Radu Valar Perinayamana, Sonda, the Yeni, Paraya, Radu Valar Perinayamana, Sonda, the Yeni, Paraya. The increased funding by the World Bank and other international agencies for aquaculture has intensified the exploitation of the third world farmers and fisherfolk, sparking off more protests. The industry, however, hides from the consumer the real social and ecological cost of bringing shrimp to their table. On October 15, 1995, at an international convention held in Orissa, 
fish workers and farmers from the coast called for action expressing solidarity between consumers of affluent countries and third world coastal communities. The struggle against the violence of the Blue Revolution has just begun. The shrimp has become a symbol of the people's fight for survival. Thank you.